Hello and welcome back to our special 2016 Year in Review. It was another big year for the RBA. 2016 saw two interest rate cuts as the central bank tried to balance the forces of low inflation and rising house prices. Carson Scott takes a look at the year that was for the Reserve Bank of Australia. Continuity through volatility. That has been the Reserve Bank in 2016. A change of governor from Stevens to Lowe, two cuts of the cash rate to negotiate in May and August, and as usual, those offshore headwinds. Brexit, Trump, always China, and now the ratings agencies telling the government it's time to act. Stop relying on these guys to do your dirty work. From the left, Shane Oliver, AMP Capital, David Bassanis, Beta Shares, Mark Bailey, Fig. Coming together as they did through 2016 to comment, to give insight and to chart a way forward on what this central bank will be likely doing next. We end 2016 having ridden uh, through turbulent months and indeed final days of this year. Markets look to have grown up though since all the worries from yesteryear. Is that an encouragement for the Reserve Bank or are there things that we're not paying heed to and even they might be underestimating into 2017? What's top of their list? I think it's true that when you look globally, a lot of fear at the start of 2016 and then all those worries about Brexit, about Trump, about Italy and of course what happened on each of those things, markets actually rallied. We still have the promise and it only remains a promise of pump priming by the world's largest economy. It's a wing and a prayer. He's never ever had to deliver on it before. Why believe him now? Bonds are really going a bit haywire, are they not? Into the year like that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean they're pricing in for this inflation that may or may not come through. I'm not sure where you're going to see inflation. I'm not sure whether that bond market route and let's not forget it's just government bonds not really corporate bonds which are different and I think a lot of investors are, are, are getting caught up in that uh, equities versus bond story. What is going to be the smoking gun to get this bank into further action? Is it going to be a realization that actually the, the ratings agencies are breathing down our neck and that any potential for further spending looks awfully heroic when you've got a divided Senate? I mean this is not just a sort of order it up and it'll come like China. Look, I think it, it basically the RBA will be g driven by inflation. The next two CPI results, we see that underlying inflation is still uh, travelling below 2%, plus growth probably closer to 25 rather than 3 well, Speaking of growth, uh, we get February, even before uh, those quarterly numbers, we get a February assessment on the outlook. Will they downgrade Shane? And is that, if anything, your rationale to ease on a downgrade rather than ease and stand still? I think the reality is that the Reserve Bank will have to downgrade their circa 3% growth forecast. That in turn must mean they're going to have to delay the rise in inflation back towards their target, which ultimately I think will be the reason why we'll get another rate cut sometime in the next few months.